months of progress have finally come to fruition for SpaceX, as Starship's Booster 9 just completed its first static fire test. The test marks a significant achievement for the company as they look forward to an imminent second launch test for the craft. What did SpaceX learn from this valuable test? Did they collect enough data to acquire a new launch license from the FAA? Or will the authorities put a stop to the company's ambitions? Let's talk about the final preparations SpaceX had to make and how the booster performed during the static fire test. SpaceX successfully accomplished the inaugural static fire test for Booster 9. This followed a series of preliminary assessments on the rocket, including its third cryogenic proof test and a comprehensive spin prime test that involved all 33 of the booster's Raptor engines. Prior to the test, frost and condensation emerged on Booster 9's liquid oxygen tank, a clear sign that liquid oxygen was being loaded into the rocket. The engines then began venting, indicating the initiation of engine cooling. Subsequently, the fire extinguisher and detonation suppression system created to cleanse the orbital launch mount using high-pressure nitrogen gas and water was activated. Finally, the spin prime test took place. In this test, the engine's liquid oxygen turbo pump was accelerated to its operational speeds, and liquid oxygen was made to flow through it. This effectively verified the functionality of the engine's oxygen pumps as anticipated. Having successfully finished the spin prime test, the teams at Starbase entered the last stage of getting the orbital launch mount ready for the static fire test campaign. They also tested the water-cooled steel plates. These plates are designed to release large amounts of water beneath the launch mount. This water serves to redirect the force from the 33 Raptor engines of the Super Heavy booster. SpaceX recently added high-resistance concrete around the area outside the steel plates. This was done to make the launch pad even stronger than before. Trucks carrying liquid methane and liquid oxygen arrived at the launch site as well. These trucks filled the storage tanks in the tank farm with the propellants needed for the static fire test. In the initial static fire tests, only a few booster engines will likely be used. The test campaign will conclude with a complete static fire using all 33 engines. Once Booster 9 completes all the tests before its launch, the next significant step will involve preparing a full stack of the Starship. This will be followed by a wet dress rehearsal. During the wet dress rehearsal, SpaceX engineers will practice several procedures that they will carry out on the actual launch day. This includes pumping the propellants into both the Super Heavy first stage and the Starship upper stage. They will also go through a launch day countdown rehearsal, stopping just a few seconds before the engines ignite. Once all the tests before the launch are finished and SpaceX receives the necessary launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration, the Starship will once again take off from Starbase and head toward orbit. In June, SpaceX shared its intention to introduce a new method called hot staging for the Starship, beginning with its upcoming orbital test flight. This technique involves firing up the engines on the Starship's upper stage just before it separates from the booster stage, while the two stages are still connected. This innovation has the potential to enhance the amount of payload the Starship can carry to orbit by around 10%. The benefit comes from the fact that the engines will continue to provide thrust during this transition without any pause. To make this work, SpaceX is planning to attach an interstage section on top of the Super Heavy booster. This will allow the exhaust from the upper stage's engines to be released during the hot staging process. For testing purposes, a prototype has been relocated to Massey's. This test article has been specifically designed to assess the structural strength and durability of the interstage under such conditions. The test article is composed of three main parts, a Starship aft skirt, an interstage ring section, and a booster forward dome equipped with grid fin simulators. The interstage is securely connected to both the booster and ship sections using clamps. When the actual flight takes place, the clamps on the ship's side of the interstage will release the Starship during the process of stage separation. The vents on the interstage aren't evenly distributed. Instead, they're arranged in three groups of two. This configuration is designed to effectively expel the exhaust from the Starship during the hot staging maneuver. To reinforce the interstage ring's strength and durability, there are triangular stringers inside the vertical supports. This structural design not only enhances its integrity, but also guides the exhaust from the Starship's upper stage outwards. Upon reaching Massey's, the assembly of the forward dome and interstage was lifted and positioned on the top of the can crusher test stand. Next, the ship's aft skirt was placed on the interstage ring, and the can crusher cap was then put on top of the aft skirt. The can crusher test stand is essentially a testing platform designed to replicate the force experienced during a Starship launch. It's used to ensure that the components can endure the pressures and stresses of an actual flight. During the test, a set of 20 cables connected to hydraulic rams will compress the test tank, simulating the maximum forces that are anticipated during flight. If the interstage test article successfully passes the can crusher test, SpaceX will proceed to install a similar interstage design on Booster 9 for the upcoming orbital test flight. However, if the test article fails to withstand the stresses during the can crusher test, SpaceX will need to revise the interstage design. This could lead to a delay in the schedule for the next orbital test flight while they make the necessary adjustments.
adjustments. After finishing all the initial assessments, SpaceX conducted the first static fire test of Super Heavy Booster 9 on Sunday, August 6th at its launch site in South Texas. The ignition of all 33 engines was quite a sight, and there were both encouraging and concerning aspects observed during the brief test firing. Among the positive outcomes, Booster 9 emerged from the test intact and seemed to be in favorable condition following the test. Additionally, the company's extensively revamped ground systems, including an improved water suppression system, seem to perform effectively in safeguarding both the rocket and the launch pad. Nevertheless, the test did not reach its intended duration. It concluded after 2.74 seconds, as reported by SpaceX's webcast, which fell short of the initially planned five seconds. In addition, four out of the 33 primary Raptor engines on the rocket shut down ahead of schedule. This highlights that SpaceX is continuing to grapple with the dependability of its Raptor engines, despite their dedicated efforts to enhance their performance. It's important to note that this rocket is propelled by engines known as Raptor 2. To address these reliability concerns, SpaceX is currently working on an upgraded version named Raptor 3. This updated version aims to tackle the issues and enhance the engine's consistency and performance. Nonetheless, the testing conducted on Sunday signifies progress for SpaceX, bringing them closer to the potential second launch of the Starship vehicle. The complete configuration of the rocket comprises both the Super Heavy booster and the Starship upper stage. As of now, it remains uncertain whether SpaceX intends to carry out additional tests on this booster, or if they gathered enough data from Sunday's testing to proceed with a launch attempt in the coming months. Consequently, it's also not clear how far SpaceX is from embarking on a second attempt to launch the Starship. To provide context, there was a span of 70 days between the static fire test of Booster 7, which propelled the initial Starship launch, and the actual liftoff. Unfortunately, this first launch attempt on April 20th faced setbacks due to engine troubles and other issues, resulting in the failure of the booster stage's flight. Nonetheless, the timing of this recent test on a Sunday holds significance. SpaceX can only shut down the road leading to its launch site and Boca Chica Beach for a limited number of weekend days annually. This suggests a certain level of urgency surrounding this launch campaign. SpaceX has achieved substantial advancement since the unsuccessful launch attempt on April 20th. This previous attempt resulted in significant harm to the company's orbital launch mount and related ground equipment situated in South Texas. Most notably, it seems that the recently installed water deluge system performed as intended during the static fire test as it produced an immense amount of steam as designed. SpaceX probably gathered gathered a substantial amount of data regarding the performance of the reworked launch site and the water deluge system during Sunday's test. This data is likely to be crucial for fulfilling the requirements of the Federal Aviation Administration as part of the process to obtain the necessary launch license. With the first static fire finally done, it will be interesting to see what changes SpaceX makes to the booster to ensure that the engines perform according to expectations on launch day. Do you think that the Raptor 2 is good enough to take Starship to orbit? Or does SpaceX need to act fast and prepare the new Raptor 3 for launch? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.